All right, so another day, we're back at it. Today's goal is to get this whole heater core and fan and any of the heating components and climate control stuff that I'm not gonna be needing. So I'm gonna gut it all out of there because uh, I'm not gonna use it. So start taking that apart and figuring out what part of the harness needs to stay and what, what can go. Um, I assume it's all just kind of part of one big harness so it'll end up just being zip tied up but let's start by just taking it apart piece by piece okay so not too difficult to get this out you do have to remove a couple nuts from these studs and then the one that you would never assume is right here it's a stud that's on the back side of the heater core that goes through the firewall and uh props to Busta john for finding that one because that's was the one that was holding me up so I'm gonna figure out how I need to clean this up here. So the, the wiring that, that was attached to those heater components, I believe I could probably just, you know, tuck up under here and um, get this cleaned up so then I can tackle getting the pedal out. And it looks like there is just a, like a cotter pin holding the pedal in right there. And once I remove that, I should be able to slide the pedal out and this whole area will stay in and I'll just then figure out where that drive-by-wire bracket's gonna go. So glad that's out. Um, we'll get this buttoned back up and, and continue forward. Okay, so the pedal came out. Like I said, there's just a cotter pin. And once I was able to remove that, it is a little tight on this left side, but uh, I managed to get it out. When I look at the bracket that I'm gonna be using, it's gonna go right here and mount onto that stud. Um, the problem is, is that this bracket has to be removed uh, and those look like spot welds. So I'm gonna have to drill those out and then remove this bracket and this should then be able to mount up. So I'll tackle that now and um, hopefully this comes off pretty easily. All right, so we're gonna tackle this bracket here. I got my eye uh, gear on, my safety eye gear, because we're gonna be using an air pneumatic cutoff wheel <laughs> to tackle that. Um, I do have a pressurized bottle of water here, as well as a uh, fire extinguisher down there, and have, have some rubber matting to protect the carpet. Um, luckily for me, this is spinning in the right direction that should throw sparks back in and down rather than in my face. So it is an awkward angle. I have to grab it. I have to get it from the right side, which I am left-handed, which just is another challenge. So I'm going to get, uh, situated and hopefully this goes well. I'm just going to take my time and go at it slow. Let the, uh, the bit do the work and, um, Hopefully, hopefully the outcome is positive. All right, so that worked really, really well. You can see it just took that off right there. And then this allows the rye wire plate to go just like so. And then it sits nice, nice and flush right there. So we can use some OEM hardware right here and uh, get that on there. So this actually worked out really well. Uh, I was unaware that I would have to take that part of the bracket off. I thought this was just gonna be a bolt-on affair, but uh, nonetheless, yeah, this, this is gonna work out great. So let's get these tightened up, this last one mounted, and then we'll get the pedal on. Okay, so that's mounted. It is nice and sturdy. Um, I can't imagine 
anything else being more rigid or sturdy, that's bolted in there very nicely and um, tighten those bolts up really well. So we're now we're ready to put the pedal on here. Let's see if I can do that with one hand and show you. Uh, it's probably gonna be too hard. So this will just get mounted right there. Uh, Rywire supplies three, um, three bolts for that. So I'll get those in and then we'll, um, I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, so the pedal is installed. I used the three 10 millimeter bolts that Rywire provides and I added a little Loctite to them just for some peace of mind. And you can see it works really well. Um, there's the harness, hopefully this isn't in the way. Now that I look at that, we might have an issue here. <clears throat> but that is the mount for the dash, I believe. So, we're gonna have to figure that out. If that has to come out or not. Let me get the plug that they provide and see. But it does look pretty tight, shoot. Okay, so I think we'll be okay. Here's the the plug they provide that if you wanted to use your own harness or your existing harness, you could pin it in. Um, it doesn't have any clearance issues there. Uh, but we'll see. I'm going to get the, the wiring harness that I have that I'm going to be running and see if we can get it in there. I think we'll be okay. So, But let's double check before we get this all buttoned up. So there it is with the wiring harness and the plug. And I haven't even clipped it in, so once it is fully pressed on, uh, there should be plenty of, of room and that that wire and plug shouldn't have uh, too much of a bend once it's all the way all the way in. So this is great. Um, what a good kit. They don't tell you that you have to cut that piece off. The directions are quite vague. Um, but it seems to work, so that's that's the most important thing. So I'm going to now get this cleaned up and start to reinstall the dashboard. Okay, so I got the dash ready to go. I got my bolts uh, in place so I can hopefully do this by myself. I got it out by myself. I'm hoping to get it back in by myself. All the wires that need to be placed somewhere are. The only plug that is affected is that blue one right, right there. Uh, that's for the heater and it's no longer there. Everything else remains where it's at. And then once the dash is in, it gets plugged back into the mounted fuse box. So uh, I'll put this on the time lapse and you can watch me struggle with this with some fun music. Okay, so it's just sitting in place. I have one bolt down here for now, but let's go over the bolts that are necessary. There's two up here and then one down here. And there's these two lower ones and then there's these two side ones. And then to finish it up, there's that 10 millimeter up there. So those are all of the bolts that hold the dash into place. So um, you know it's in it. it it kind of just sits into place um, once you get it in there. Uh, and I started with it tilted back at me and got the feet on the ground and then rolled it and just sat it into place. And you can tell it's it's where it needs to be. So I'm going to get this um, tightened up, get these bolts on, and then start putting the fuse box and the shifter column and steering wheel back in place and getting this all buttoned up. All right, so I got the dash all back in, no problems. Everything is uh, bolted in and torqued down. If anybody's curious, those the the five bolts that that mount this dash are 28 foot pounds. If you care about that, and the ones for the steeling column are nine. That's all in the manual, um, as well as those. Those are 28. I just like to make sure that I'm checking all the boxes so I don't have to worry. It's just a peace of mind for me. A um, lot of space in there now. So um, I still need to route the kill switch from JDI Industries. I'll wait on that. And I'm gonna leave all of this exposed 
uh, for now and, and not put any of the pieces underneath back on just because I think that'll give me some uh, more room when I mount the shifter as well as the cables. And I'm not going to put the gauge cluster back in because we're not going to run that stock gauge cluster. We are going to run the IC7 digital dash. So super excited for this. This is going to just really enhance the driving experience and uh, it serves a lot of purposes. It's really nice because you can have all of the data and information all in one space. Um, I won't have to have gauges anywhere throughout the the cockpit or on the dash or have to cut any holes. This will display all of that information that uh, I could want. So this is going to be this is awesome. I'm super excited to run this. I do need to get the the bezel for this that will actually house that. Uh, so that's another piece I will need to get, but that's going to be for another video. So. If you've stuck around again, thank you for watching. Enjoy the day. And on the next video, I think we're going to be doing the subframe and the traction bar. So thank you again. Appreciate it. Take care.